Hi everyone, David Jackson here with Sling and Stone Marketing, where I share with you the tools and strategies to help you market your business online. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on any new videos that I upload. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to set up email automation using Drip. Uh, it's the email marketing software that I use in my business, and it was built from the ground up uh, with automation in mind so that you can send the right email to the right person at the right time. I put a link in the description so that you can take action right now, get signed up, and follow along in this video. Then at the end of the video, you'll be comfortable enough to uh, understand the settings in the back end, and you'll also be able to put together a workflow so that you can be doing marketing 24 seven without any extra effort. So let's get started. So if you use the link in the description, you'll be taken to the Drip website where you can either get a demo or you can join Drip for free. Now click on that and that'll take you to this page where you put in your first and your last name, your company email address, your company website address, uh, your email list size, just whichever one uh, is right for you. I'm gonna choose a password and click start my trial. So once you're all signed up, this will take you to your main dashboard. And what I'm gonna do now is walk you through the settings in the back end. So we're gonna go up to the top here and click on the three dots and we're going to choose account. And that will take you to the general info. And I'm going to come down here and change the account name. I'm just gonna put demo uh, since this is just a demo account for me, but you can put uh, the name of your website and that will display up here at the top. Uh, the domain name I'm going to keep the same and my email address, uh, this will just be the email address that you want associated with this account. Uh, you can have as many accounts as you want. Uh, so if you have multiple websites, uh, you can have an account for each website so that you can keep all of the subscribers and all of your uh, workflows and everything separate. It just makes it a lot easier and a lot uh, cleaner to keep things organized that way. Now you won't get charged separately for each account. You'll only have one billing account, but you can have multiple sub accounts for each of your websites. Then I'll just put in a phone number. You'll want to use your real phone number, of course. And then we'll go down to the bottom and click save settings. Next, we're going to go to Site Setup. And this is basically the JavaScript code that you will install on your website. Uh, this allows you to be able to track your subscribers, what pages they visit, and you can set up workflows and triggers depending on what pages they visit. But I'm going to do that after uh, we go through these settings. And uh, if you have a WordPress website, it's really easy for you to go ahead and do uh, but if you think that this is too technical and you have a developer, then you can email the instructions to your developer, uh, put a little message in there, and then click send instructions. Then we'll come down here and take a look at the advanced. Uh, cross domain tracking is for those of you who might have an e-commerce store where the cart portion of your store, like once a person goes to check out, uh, the domain name might be different. So if that's the case, then you want to turn on cross-domain tracking so that Drip is able to track your subscriber from your store to the checkout portion of your store. Uh, this is different for different people depending on uh, what type of shopping cart you use. Then you have form schema validation. Uh, by default, if you create a form that contains fields that you haven't set up in the back end of Drip, uh, Drip will automatically just take that extra information and create custom fields for it. Uh, but if you don't want that to happen, then you wanna turn this on so that only the forms that have fields that match up with what you have set up in the back end will be accepted. All the other ones will be rejected. I leave this off because if someone is filling out a form that I set up, I don't want to have to worry about whether or not I set up a custom field uh, to accept the information that they're putting in. Uh, I just want whatever information I ask for in that form 
to get pulled directly into drip and set up automatically. So I'm gonna leave this one off and click save settings. Then I'll go up here and click on members. And this will allow you to uh, add any members on your team to be able to access your, uh, the backend of your drip account to do certain things. I'm just gonna leave it as myself and go over to EU compliance. And this is uh, basically for people in the EU that have, uh, they need to comply with the GDPR. You know, I'm not an attorney, so use your own discretion, but I would still rather for myself, just set it all up. So then that way, if someone from the EU is visiting my site and signs up for my list, then I, I still wanna be GDPR compliant uh, anyway, so that I just won't have anything to worry about. So this basically shows you some of the things that uh, that this would do by adding uh, a checkbox to the forms that you create in Drip uh, so that everything will be GDPR compliant. Uh, it allows you to do certain things like label those uh, who have checked this checkbox and those that haven't, and then you can treat each one separately so make sure that you do some research on the GDPR uh, and being compliant with that, uh, especially if you're in the EU. Just read this over and make sure that this is something that you want to implement. Then you also have the double opt-in uh, double opt -in confirmation emails. Uh, this allows you to put in some extra text into your confirmation emails so that when you send them the confirmation email for signing up to your newsletter or, or to your list, uh, it will have that compliance language in there. And you do that by putting in this uh, compliance underscore HTML tag so that the EU compliance consent statement will be in there. All right, then we'll go up here and we'll click on export account. And this just basically allows you to export all of your account data uh, so that you can save it, back it up, uh, just have a copy of it somewhere and then delete account, which will of course uh, delete your your account. Uh, now that would just be this kind of sub account. This won't be like your billing account. So if you uh, if you click the delete account, you know for me it would just be deleting this demo account. It won't delete uh, the other accounts that I have set up for my other uh, websites. All right, next we're going to go to email setup. And these are just uh, your basic email settings. So you have your default from name, which I'm just gonna put my name, David Jackson. Then your default from email. So I'll just put demo at slingandstonemarketing.com. Then you enter your, uh, your mailing address. And this is required under the Can Spam Act. So if you wanna read up more about that, you can click this link here. But basically you have to use a real mailing address. So basically if you're a business and you work out of your home, then this has to be your home address. Uh, you can also use a PO box or you can use, uh, like if you have a UPS store or something like that, then you can use uh, some other address, but it has to be yours so that if they were to send uh, a piece of mail to you, you will receive it. And that is required by law. So just for the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to put in uh, 123 someplace street, Dallas, Texas, 12345. Uh, but just make sure that you put in a real address. Then next we have the default footer text which is basically the stuff that, uh, the text that appears at the end of your emails, uh, each time you send out your email. Uh, you always have to have your postal address in there and an, uh, an unsubscribe link so that a person can unsubscribe. And again, that's all by law, so you have to make sure that that is in there. Then you also have this text editor at the bottom where you can uh, add or remove text and you can put in stuff there that kind of fits your personality of what you would say or if there's other things that you want to make sure that is in every single email that you send out in the footer uh, you would just put that down here you can format the text you can change the font the size all of that type of stuff here 
then if you click on personalize, this will bring up a little window where you can take a look at all of the different uh, liquid short codes. Uh, liquid is just uh, a programming language that will substitute that little tag uh, with other text that you have set for it. So, you know, you can put your EU consent, your email address, uh, the subscribers lead score, you know, all these different tags uh, you can put into the footer of the email should you choose to do so. You click close. And I'll click save settings. Then we'll go to unsubscribe links. And this basically uh, asks what you want the behavior of your unsubscribe link to be. So when a person receives an email, there's gonna be a unsubscribe link in the bottom of the email. And once they click that, this is what you want to have happen. Uh, it can either take them to the subscription management page where they can see all of the different uh, campaigns that, that they are a part of, that they're receiving emails from, and then they can pick and choose uh, which email campaign they want to unsubscribe from or they can or you can have it either just unsubscribe them from everything automatically uh, i like to have it take them to the management page so then that way uh, they can pick and choose maybe there's just uh, a certain email campaign that they're no longer interested in and they just want to be removed from that one but there might be uh, say for instance if you have a, a discounts email campaign and they want to keep receiving discount emails but if there's some other side email campaign uh, that they no longer want to be a part of then they can just uh, unsubscribe themselves from that one campaign and also sometimes people will accidentally click on the unsubscribe link uh, they might be clicking from somewhere else or might accidentally uh, click the button and it just happens to be on the unsubscribe so i don't want them to you know in that case to automatically be unsubscribed from my entire email list uh, because then the only way that they'll be able to uh, get emails again is they'll have to go through the sign up process again and so I just want to make it so that they have to take just one extra step to completely remove them remove themselves from my list if that's what they want so we'll click save settings and we'll go to resend confirmations. Now this will be like when someone signs up for your email list and you send them an email confirmation because they have to be double opted in. Then if they don't open up the confirmation email and click on the link, then after two days, Drip will automatically send them another confirmation email because they might not have gotten the first email or they might have forgotten about it. So this is a way for Drip to automatically just resend it after two days. Uh, and then when they see that second one, they might remember, oh yeah, that's right. You know, I want to uh, receive emails from this company. So they'll open that up and then they'll click on the confirmation. So I like to have this turned on and then I'll click save settings. Then next we'll go to reply tracking. Now what this does is it allows Drip to track people who actually re reply to your email. So say for instance, you send out an email uh, and you might want some feedback from some of the people on your list. And you tell them in order to give you the feedback, all they have to do is just reply to the email. So if you have this turned on, then Drip will be able to track those people that actually engaged and replied back to you via their email. But there is a little caveat if you have this turned on uh, because the only way for a trip to uh, track the people that re reply back to your email is they have to set up a separate reply to email address. And what that will do is on some email programs such as uh, Gmail and you know other ones like in Hotmail and stuff like that, they might view your email as spam because it has a different reply to address than the one that you the one that we set up uh, in the settings earlier so therefore they might just put your email into the spam box rather than it going to the person's uh, inbox and i would rather just have my email have a higher chance of making it into into the inbox and not have the ability to track them if they reply to an email 
than to track them and then have my email go to spam. So deliverability is my highest priority in this case. So I keep this setting turned off and then click save settings. And then we'll click on Google Analytics. Now here we get to set up the Google Analytics uh, tags. And basically I like to keep everything nice and simple. I keep the source as drip. The medium is email because people will be clicking from uh, an email that I send them. Uh, the campaign, I keep it as the campaign name so that I know which campaign is the one that generated the click. Uh, but you can also change it to the email subject line, uh, just not have one at all. And for content, uh, I like to keep it as the email subject line. So then that way I know which email it was within the campaign that sent the click. And then you can set it so that it will automatically add these uh, analytics tags to every link that you put in your email. Uh, I like to keep this off because not every link that I put in an email is going to go back to my website. I might send them to another website, but I'm more of an information type of email marketer. So if you are doing like e-commerce, then you probably want this turned on because all of the links that are going to be in your emails are likely going to point back to your store, to a product page or something like that. And then this saves you the time of setting it up when you set up the link, this will just automatically put it on there. And then you can also do this for uh, your broadcast emails and your automation emails if you want things to be different depending on the type of email that you send. So after you get all that set up, click Save Changes and we'll click on Sending Domain. Uh, I generally just leave this alone because I don't have any uh, email servers of my own uh, that I want to send my emails through. I just want to use Drip's email servers uh, because they have a high reputation and they're likely to make it to the person's inbox. So I just leave that as is and then I'll click on content snippets. And as you can see here, you can create a little snippet so that if there's something that you want to put into a lot of emails uh, and you don't want to have to you know, copy and paste it from a text file and put it into the email, then this gives you a way of just creating it right here within Drip and setting up a little liquid tag for it so that anytime that you want it to be uh, automatically put into an email that you send out, then all you have to do is just copy and paste the tag and it'll and Drip will automatically replace that little short code tag with the text that you set up here. Then we'll click on expiring links and expiring links uh, allows you to set up a link that will change from one URL to another. So like, let's say uh, that you send out an email and people that click on the link before a certain date will be taking, taken to one page, but then after that date arrives, then they will be taken to another page. So this allows you to set up like maybe little special deals that uh, are valid only for a certain amount of time. And then after that it expires and anybody that clicks on it after that can't get to that, that special page. So it's uh, something pretty cool that you can set up and uh, send out an email and then not have to worry about uh, people viewing your email a week or two after uh, the sale is over or the little special event is over and still accessing uh, a page that they shouldn't be able to get to. Then next we'll click on integrations. And as you can see here, Drip integrates with a bunch of different software programs out there. You know, they also group them by category. So if you have a CRM, uh, you can integrate with any of those. If you have an e-commerce store, uh, you know, these are all the different e-commerce uh, shopping carts that, that it integrates with. Uh, so you just choose the one that you're using and it will give you instructions on how to integrate Drip with it. You know, again, you have landing pages, memberships, and all these other different ones. So you can take a look at that, see which ones you have, and get it integrated with Drip. And you can do pretty cool things with uh, event notifications and setting up triggers and you know being able to get information from those different softwares and then maybe starting different workflows depending on uh, what's going on in that other software.
Then let's click on groups. And basically this just allows you to group things together so that you can kind of manage things a little bit easier. Uh, and then we click on templates. Uh, this allows you to create new templates. So this way when you're setting up new email, then uh, you can choose from different templates. So depending on the type of email that you're sending out, uh, you might want to have a certain type of template for that email as compared to another one. So you might have flash sales, uh, which follow one kind of a template structure. And you might have um, other things like if there's you know, Halloween or Christmas is coming up, then you want to have like a Christmas template or something like that and use that for your emails. Then you can set, it, set that all up here. And then when you create your emails, you can choose which template you want to use. You know, you choose the template from the drop down here. Uh, you have a preview of what it will look like. Uh, if you want to mess with the HTML, you can do so. Uh, you could take a look at what the plain text email would look like. And uh, if you want to create a new template, you just click here, put in the template name. Uh, if you want to put in short codes, uh, again, these are those liquid short codes that I talked about. You can just uh, you know, insert those in there and it'll automatically replace it with the, uh, the text that's already set up. Uh, if you want to duplicate a template, you can do so, so that you know, if it's an overall template that you like and you just want to make a couple of different changes, you can do that there. And next we'll click lead scoring. Now I like to have lead scoring enabled uh, because what this allows you to do is to take actions depending on how engaged uh, the people on your list are. So what it will do is it will keep a running count of the points that people uh, accumulate as you're, as you're going through your email campaigns. Uh, you can also have it set up so that if they visit a special page on your website, then it will also add points to their lead score. So for instance, if they visited a page named demo, then I can set the point score for that. Uh, if they visited a pricing page, let's say it's uh, prices, then five points will be added to their lead score. But if they visited a work for us page, then they're not really interested in buying from us. So we're going to take off 10 points from their lead score because this person isn't really going to be a lead uh, that is going to buy something from us. Uh, then we can go down to email engagement so that every time that they open up one of our emails, uh, we add a point to their score. And if they click on a link within our email, then that's showing some engagement. Uh, then we're going to add three points onto their lead score. And next we'll take a look at custom events. We can add a custom event so that if they, you know, download a report or attend a webinar, then you can uh, add a certain number of points to their lead score for doing those, for taking those actions. Then you might have different opt-in forms. So say for instance, you might have one form where they join your newsletter. So all you do is ask for their name and email address, right? That's one form. But then you might have like a lead generating form where not only do they put in their name and email address, but they might put in their phone number, uh, their home address, something like that, because they're actually becoming a lead. So for an opt-in form that is gathering even more information from them, uh, if they fill that out, they're more likely to be a lead and are more likely to purchase from you. So if you receive their information through that, that other form, then you want their lead score to be higher after they fill that out and submit it because they feel put in, because they gave you more information. Then you also have the lead threshold where once someone on your list uh, hits a certain number of points, then they'll go from being a prospect to a lead. And once that happens, then you can set up a workflow to send out uh, an email sequence uh, to perhaps get that person to make a purchase or to get on the phone with one of your salespeople. Then you can also set the initial score. Uh, and you want to have an initial score so that uh, it will allow for points to be taken away without them going to zero. So uh, 30 points is the default and that's, that's generally pretty good. So I keep that the same and click update settings. Next, we'll go to webhooks and webhooks is pretty technical. So uh, unless you know what you're doing and 
you're familiar with uh, JSON programming, then you probably don't want to mess with anything here. Uh, if you have a developer that knows how to do some of this stuff, then you can have him set, set up different, uh, different webhooks for you. Uh, otherwise, we'll just skip this. And then lastly is billing, which I won't go to. So basically you'll be able to change your plan if you want, change your credit card information, all that type of stuff. And if you want to uh, completely cancel your subscription, that means get rid of everything, all of your accounts that you have set up, everything. If you wanna just completely close your Drip accounts, that will be done here. So just real quick, I'm going to show you how to uh, integrate Drip with WordPress. A lot of you probably have a WordPress website. It's really easy. It'll only just take a couple minutes. And I'll walk you through that right now. Uh, so we're gonna go to the integrations page. On our integrations, we're gonna come down all the way to the bottom and click on WordPress. All right, and it gives us the instructions that we need to do to integrate it. Uh, but I'm gonna walk you through that right now. Uh, all, all that we'll need is the account ID. So I'm gonna show you how to install the plugin now. I'm gonna go over to WordPress. I'm at my WordPress dashboard. I'm gonna go over to plugins and click that. I'm gonna come up here at the top and click add new. And then we're gonna come over to where it says search plugins. And we're gonna type in drip marketing. And that should bring up the Drip Marketing Automation plugin. And we're going to click Install Now. And now that it's installed, we're going to click Activate. All right, so that should take us over to the Drip plugin where we enter in our uh, account ID. So we're just going to paste that in there. And for visibility, uh, you want to leave this unchecked, the vis disable tracking on all pages. We want to leave that blank. And after that, click Save Changes. All right, so now the drip code is on all of our pages on our website. So we can track our subscribers, what the pages that they look at, and do things based on their behavior. If you want to integrate drip with any other of your software, then just go back to the integrations page, click on the software, and it'll give you instructions on how to integrate it uh, with that platform. So now we're back at the dashboard and we're going to uh, create a broadcast email so I'll come up to the top and click on broadcast and if you want you can either watch a help video but I'll walk you through it and click on new broadcast you have an option of either using the visual builder or the text HTML builder so I'm just going to use the text for this demo click continue uh, then we're going to give our new broadcast a name. So I'll just name this one Demo Broadcast. Click Create Broadcast. All right, now for the recipients, uh, if you already have a lot of email subscribers, then you can filter down uh, your subscribers to so that only certain types of people will receive your broadcast email. So if we click on the little drop down menu here, uh, we can filter recipients based on custom fields, the date that they might have been added, uh, the type of activity, uh, whether they've been opening emails or not, uh, their lifetime value, orders that they may have made, you know, tags that we placed on them, so different things. And so this gives you an opportunity to really uh, drill down and and target a group of people so that you can craft an email specifically for them. That way you're likely to get uh, bigger open rates, uh, more engagement, and make more sales because the email that you're sending them is more relevant to them. So once you set up your conditions here, which you don't have to do, uh, but after you do that, then you click on Save Recipients, and that means that this broadcast email will only go out to those that match your conditions. Then we'll click on email, and this is where we will craft our email. We'll give our email a subject. I'll put in hello, everyone. Uh, then we could put in a email pre-header. 
which is basically the text that will show up in the inbox uh, right after the subject line before they open up the actual email. So this is something that you can add to entice them even more to open up uh, your email. And then we go down to the email body where we will type in our email. So I'll just grab some text and paste it in there. And let's say that I want to create uh, a hyperlink. So I'll highlight that, come up here to the link. And I'll put in the web address that I want the link to go to. So it would be google.com. Then I could customize the Google Analytics parameters uh, that we set up uh, earlier in the settings. So if I want it to be different just for this one link, then I can turn that on. Or I can make this a call to action button so that it can say something like shop now and it will look like a button that they can, that they can click on. Uh, but since this is uh, within some text, I'm just going to leave that off. And after that's done, click insert. And there we have our link. So once you have your email all set up, uh, you could take a look at what the plain text version will look like. Uh, here is our link. Uh, since it's plain text, that means that there's no HTML and there's no hyperlink. So it will just put the URL of the link uh, right next to it. Then you can also go over to preview to see what your email will look like uh, when someone receives it. It's got the footer and everything in there. And once everything looks good, we can either send a test email or click save. All right, after that's done, we'll go over to settings and our from name, we're just gonna keep that the same. The from email address, we we'll keep that the same. Uh, the postal address will be the same. Uh, and if there's anyone that we, that we wanna have BCC'd, uh, we will put their email address there. If we wanna change the footer content of this email, we can do that here. Uh, if we wanna look, take a look at the HTML, can do that there. Uh, if we all, if this is an old broadcast and we want to duplicate a lot of the things from there, we can just click on duplicate this broadcast. Then we'll come over here to primary purpose. Uh, most of the time is you're gonna choose commercial uh, because you either have an e-commerce store or you might have a website that's selling something. Uh, so the purpose is to try to get someone to buy something. Uh, otherwise you can choose the transactional relationship uh, which is basically sending someone updates on the transaction that they may have previously done. So it could be a status update on their order. Uh, so you would choose that here. And if you want to know the difference between the two, then you can come down here where it says the CAN spam compliance guide and take a look at what they have to say. Then if you want to delete the broadcast, then you can just click delete this broadcast. But we're just going to go over here to schedule email to send and you can have it either sent immediately or at a specific time. So we'll choose that. You put in the date that you want it to go out and you can choose the time zone. I like to use a person's local time zone uh, in case they're halfway around the world. Then I don't want them receiving an email that is at nine o'clock my time, but it might be at like 2 a.m. in the morning their time. You know, so I would rather have it show up to, in their inbox at nine o'clock in their local time zone. Then I also like to resend the broadcast to people who haven't opened it. So uh, if they receive the email and they didn't open, then I'll put in like, let's wait two days. Uh, and then I want them, then I want Drip to resend it again. And you can change the subject of the resent email. So I like to just take the original subject line and just put resend in front of it. So then that way the person knows it. This is a resend, so if they wound up reading the first one and it didn't register for some reason, then they know that this is just the exact same uh, email and they can discard it if they already read it. And after all that's done, click on schedule broadcast. So here we are back at the dashboard and now we're going to create a campaign. So we're going to come down here. You can either watch a help video, but we're going to make a campaign and you'll follow along. I'm going to give the campaign a name. We're going to call this demo campaign. And then we can either choose a blueprint 
or start an email campaign from scratch. So if you don't want to start a campaign from a blank screen and have to uh, think about what to write, uh, then you might want to check out some of the blueprints that Drip has already created for you. And basically these are different types of email campaigns or email sequences uh, that Drip has put together that have been proven to work and get engagement and uh, responses. Uh, and you can choose whichever blueprint best fits the type of campaign that you are uh, that you're setting up so you might have like a follow-up campaign uh, for someone who has gone through a, a demo of your software or maybe they read a sample report and you're following up about uh, what was in the report you know you have all of these different uh, campaigns even the cart abandonment recovery so if you have an e-commerce store and someone abandoned your cart then you can use this campaign which already has uh, some text and wording set up to get the person to come back and finish their purchase and like let's say if you want to do a flash sale campaign then all you have to do is just fill in the uh, the training or the product that you're selling uh, and the dollar amount just fill all of that in uh, in the subject lines it's all set up for you so go through and take a look at these different blueprints and uh, see which one you like, see which one you want to use uh, for this email campaign. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the five day email mini course. So I'll click use this blueprint. And now it's loaded for me. So all I need to do is just go in and change the subject line. And if you take a look at the email, it has all of the text that I that I need. Uh, this is all proven already to work. So all I need to do is just go in and I would change uh, the topic of my course. I would put in my name, the company. You, know, you just go through and you just swap out these little tags and then put in your own information. And you can modify it if you want, uh, which is perfectly fine to make sure that it, it fits your personality and, and the things that you would say. But this at least gives you uh, a starting point so that you're not looking at a blank screen. You have something to work with something to kind of get your creative juices flowing. And uh, once you're done with that, you just come down here to save and then go to next. And it will take you over to the campaign settings where you can choose the public name of your campaign. Now this means that uh, people who are going through this campaign or have been a part of this campaign they'll be able to see this name so it is public so you want to make sure that it's something that makes sense and isn't something that you don't want your subscribers to see then of course you can change your from name the email your postal address any bcc options uh, and then the time of day that you want to send the email you know i like to keep it at the recipient's time zone uh, send it in the first email immediately after the sign up uh, the days of the week that you want emails to be sent and then you can choose whether or not you want the double opt-in conf confirmation email to be sent. Then you can set up a separate web page that people will be redirected to uh, once they click on the, the confirmation link in the email. So I can put something like uh, slingandstonemarketing.com slash confirmed. So it can say something like, yeah, you've been confirmed. Uh, you'll start receiving emails shortly you know thanks for signing up or something like that uh, and then you can be notified when someone subscribes or when they are unsubscribed you just put in the email address that you want to receive those notifications then you have the primary purpose whether it's commercial or transactional and of course you can delete the campaign if you want uh, but then when you're all done you click on activate and it looks like that uh, we need to publish the emails first before uh, before we can activate it. So what I'll do is I'll just go back to the email campaign and I will change the status to published for all of these. And once I do that, go back to the settings page, get everything a quick look over and click activate. And now our campaign is live. So basically once someone gets added to this campaign. They'll receive each one of these emails with uh, a day in between. It will keep track of the opens, the clicks, and the unsubscribes that we get.
so we can see how our emails are performing. And we'll click back. And now it wants us to create, connect an opt-in form. So we're gonna do that right now. I'm gonna show you how to set up an opt-in form. And we're back at the dashboard. So we're gonna go up here to the top and click on forms. And we're gonna come down and click new opt-in form. And we're gonna give it a form name, call it demo form, create form. All right, so now we are going to design our form. So we'll come down here to where it says headline and we'll put something like sign up for my newsletter and it'll update over on the right so you know what it looks like and for the description we'll put don't miss out on special deals all right that's updated over there then for the button text we'll put something like uh, add me now and then this submission text will be after they sign up this will be the text that displays that, it, uh, that it's sending their information. So we'll just put sending. So then we're gonna go back up to the top and click on fields. And this allows us to add uh, more fields to our sign up form. So I'm going to select an identifier. We're just gonna put name and then the label. So this will be what shows up in our form, put first name, we'll keep that optional, or you can make it required if you want. Click add. So now we have another field on our, on our form and we can rearrange uh, the order as we want by just clicking and dragging. And as you can see here in the, the preview, we got our email address and our first name. Uh, if we wanna upload an image, we can do that here. Then the post sign up is what we'll display after they submit their, their information. So we'll just keep the headline as thank you for signing up. Uh, you could put in a little message there. Or if you want them to be redirected to uh, a specific page after signing up. So if you have like a custom thank you page or something like that, you can put that in here. So I'll put in Sling and Stone Marketing dot com slash thanks and I'll click redirect the submission you can send the data to a post submission page or you can send the event to Google Analytics so that you know uh, which form generated the lead we'll come up here to confirmation settings then we can set who receives a confirmation email so I like to have it only to new people, but you can change it to uh, anyone who sends or who submits the form. We'll have to click the confirmation link or you can set it to never send a confirmation email and they will automatically be uh, added to your list. Then you can change the from name, the from email or the subject of your confirmation email. Uh, if you wanna have some custom text within your confirmation email, you can put that in there. Then if you wanna have a post confirmation page that they get redirected to after they click the link, then you can put that in here. And then we'll go back up to the top and we'll take a look at the widget design. So here you wanna make sure that the widget is enabled. You can have it set to where it is a time delay, meaning that after a certain amount of time that, you're, that they're on your website, the widget will pop up. Or you can have it be where it's exit triggered, meaning that uh, if they're about to leave your website, like about to hit the back button, then the widget will pop up asking them to sign up for your newsletter. So I'm gonna leave it just as time delay and we'll come down here and we get to choose where we want our widget to display on the page. So if I click on the left tab, you can see here in the preview how that works. Uh, but you can choose wherever you want it to be. You can either even choose a light box. So I'll keep it as that. Then we'll go up to appearance 
and you can take a look at the design. You can either choose simple or classic and it'll change in the preview for you. Uh, you can choose the tab color and some presets or you can choose a custom one. And you can also take a look at the headline color. Uh, if you wanna change the font size or the opacity or the form labels, you can do that here. And we'll come up here to behavior and choose when we want our form to appear. You can either uh, have it to where it waits a certain amount of time or to pop up when the user scrolls to a certain percentage on your page. So I'll choose that and keep that as 50%. Then after it shows the pop-up widget, uh, you can have it wait X amount of days before showing it again. So I'll keep it as seven. And if the user closes it, then you can set how long before it pops up again. So I'll put that as five. And then these are some some IDs for you to manually trigger it. So if you want to pass this along to your developer so that if someone clicks on a certain button or something like that, then that will trigger this widget to pop up so that uh, a person can sign up for your list. So next we'll go to visibility and we can set this to hide on specific pages. So let's say for instance that uh, I don't want this to show up on the contact us page, right? So if someone is filling out a contact us form, maybe asking for more information, I don't want this widget to pop up asking them to sign up for my email newsletter because they might accidentally sign up for the newsletter when they want to contact us and ask us uh, some information. So I'll just put our contact us page on there so it won't show up there. Uh, or you can also choose to have it show up on specific pages or hide the widget on mobile devices. But I think all of this looks good here. Now click save settings and go over to next. Then this will take you to the rules that you can set up when this form is submitted. So you can have certain actions be taken when this specific form is submitted. So uh, for instance, if we add an action uh, we want something to happen within drip and we can either like apply a tag we can delete someone uh, we can flag them as a prospect so there are all these different drip actions that can that can take place when this specific form is uh, is submitted but we're going to use this form in a workflow so i'll just delete all of that and click save changes and next i will show you how to use this in a workflow and we're back at the dashboard. So we're gonna come up here to automation, click workflows, and we're gonna go down and click on new workflow. We're gonna give it a name, call this one demo workflow, then create workflow. So we're gonna come up here and we're gonna click define our trigger. And it's gonna ask which event uh, are you going to use to trigger this automation? And we're going to use Drip, but you can use any of these other softwares that Drip integrates with. So e-commerce store, CMS, uh, these member sites, PayPal, things like that. But we're going to use Drip and we're going to choose a trigger, which can be anything from a tag was applied or a link was clicked. Um, but we're going to choose submit a form and which form we're going to have it be the demo form that we set up and it's going to apply to everyone and if you want to take a look at what it looks like you can click on the view form link and we're going to have this trigger apply to everyone but we can change that if we want then we're going to click update trigger all right so right now uh, as the workflow stands someone's going to submit our demo form, and then they're gonna exit the workflow. But we don't want that to happen. So we're gonna click on this little plus sign. And what we wanna do is add an action. And this action is going to be from Drip. And again, we can take a look at all of the different actions that, uh, that we can do. But what we wanna do is send a campaign. It's gonna ask us which campaign and we want people to start with the first campaign email. 
but we can change that if we want. Uh, we can set to have it send a double opt-in confirmation email. So I like to have that on, or you can choose to restart this campaign whenever this action fires, or you can choose to continue sending the campaign emails, even if there's a goal uh, that was reached. So sometimes if you have like an abandoned cart uh, email sequence, then if the person winds up purchasing, you don't want to continue sending them uh, the emails within your campaign because the goal was achieved. They wound up making the purchase. Uh, so I find it best to just leave this unchecked because whatever goals you send up uh, will generally be what the email campaign is trying to get them to achieve. So it doesn't make sense when they achieve the goal but continue sending emails trying to get them to achieve that goal. So I like to leave it off. Then we'll click on update action. So we'll go up to the plus again and we're going to add something else. And this time we're gonna add a decision. So now we just need to set the parameters for the decision so that if a person matches uh, the parameter, then they will go down to the yes path. But if they don't match it, then they'll go down the no path. So I'm going to choose the filter to be uh, a tag. So if the person has a tag, start demo sale, then I want to do something with them. And if they don't have that, then I want to do something else. So we'll click on update decision. All right, so if we take a look at the workflow, we see that they reach this decision point. And, and if the person is tagged with start demo sale, then I'm going to do something with them. So I'll come over here, click on the plus, add the action. And the action I want to do is send a campaign. And I'm going to have this flash sale campaign. Then click update action. So now if the person is tagged with start demo sale, they're going to get the flash sale campaign. And if they're not, then they're going to skip that and they're gonna come down here and exit. But I'm not done yet. I wanna do one more thing for those that are going through the flash sale campaign. So I'm gonna come over here and click on the plus. And I'm gonna click action. And what I wanna have happen is remove a tag and I want that start demo sale tag removed from them. All right, so I know that if they're going through the campaign, they had that tag and they've finished that campaign. So now I wanna remove the tag from those people. Then after all of that's done, they'll exit the workflow. All right, so now we have our workflow complete. So we come up here, we click on start workflow and let me do just a quick walkthrough. Now what we're gonna have is someone submits the demo form. Then we're going to send them the demo campaign then we're going to check to see if the person is tagged with the start demo sale tag. And if they are, they're going to be sent the flash sale campaign. Then after that campaign is over, we're going to remove that tag. Then they're going to exit the workflow. And if the person is not tagged with that start demo sale, then they're just going to exit the workflow. So this is real simple. Uh, you can try it out, play around with it, set up your own workflows. Uh, it's really easy, it's uh, pretty intuitive, and you can try it out and set up some workflows that you can start using right now. So that's how you set up email automation using Drip. And if you followed along with this tutorial, then use the hashtag GiantSlayer in the comments below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss out on any new videos that I make. I thank you so much for taking your time to watch this, and until next time, Go out and slay some giants.